Cool. So every, everybody asked me why I started a YouTube channel, and uh, I must be honest, I've watched a lot of guys on YouTube, and uh, and I thought, I thought, well, you know, what can I share on YouTube that would be entertaining and hopefully people would enjoy? So everyone said to me, well, look, you travel a lot, so do that. And I thought, well, you know, there's a lot of guys that are doing travel videos. Um, so I decided the best thing for me to do is, yes, I'll share some of my travel stuff. And yes, I'll share some of the races that I go to and some of the cool places that I go to. But I think the 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 sort of uh, driving force behind what I'm trying to achieve on YouTube is um, things that inspire me and travel inspires me. I love seeing the world. Uh, Ironman races inspires me. I love being around athletes and, um, and you know, Comrades Marathon and two and uh, Absa Cape Epic and those kind of things inspire me. But I want to start telling stories about some of the people that do those races, some of the people that travel to these events and some of the most remarkable people that, that achieve success at, in ultra distance events that on its own is remarkable enough, but then do it for a passion and for a purpose. And the obvious first interview for me is my good friend, uh, Mike Webb from uh, from King Williamstown, uh, who I met when I was working on radio uh, in, in the Eastern Cape. He came in for a couple of interviews and uh, he shocked me, he walked in dressed as a fairy. We'll get into that in a bit. But joining us on screen, all the way from uh, the great, the thriving metropolis of King Williamstown, Michael Webb. Hello, yay! Hey, Gordy. Hey man, thanks thanks for having me on your show, man, and your YouTube channel. And I, I feel quite honoured that you say that I'm the, I'm the first person you're interviewing. And number uh, one, man, you. like I say, it's absolutely awesome. Number really, one, it's quite something well, look, I'm, the heart I'm, thanks, I'm, I'm a big fan of, of what you do. Um, I also like yourself and and Dean Vanesh uh, in East London. I'm going to chat to him in a bit as well. Um, you guys have created like this video presence, this online uh, vlogging presence. Almost, it almost feels like you guys did it by accident. Like you weren't really planning to create this this uh, this vibe, but you just filmed yourself, or you went live on Facebook, and then all of a sudden people started catching on to what you were doing, and you built an audience, right? No, totally. It's it, it actually, as you said, completely by mistake, and a lot of what our stuff has been completely by mistake, and and. Uh, it's actually funny that you say that completely by mistake because even even my running was almost by mistake because I literally went out to go and have a run to get fit for when my son was going to be born. Wow. And three months later, I'm going, well, Allah, this is quite fun. Yeah. Uh, let's see how far we can go. I think it was three months later, I ran my first marathon. Wow. So, wow. Yeah, a lot of stuff sort of happened by mistake and it, and it just evolved from there. And then with the, with the video stuff and the live videos and that, again, also just something I started doing. And as you say, people keep on blog logging onto it and I keep on going why do you keep watching me <laughs> something well, I must be doing right entertaining. I think I'm enjoying it as well well it's entertaining and that's and that's what Facebook live and YouTube is all about it's about entertainment and about informing and and people feeling connected to you and engaging with you and it's yeah. one of the things that I've always admired about you Mike is the fact that you're a humble down-to-earth Eastern Cape guy uh taking on the stars you know literally going out there putting yourself on a limb on a regular basis but everyone can relate to you so with that in mind let's just start Start with who is Michael Webb and, and 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 where were you born? Where did you go to school? Or what did you do? It did you were you a naughty oak at school or were you a good oak at school? <laughs> yeah, okay, so I, I was actually born in Derbs where you are at the moment, but I mean we were we grew up on a farm outside King Williamstown, yeah, until um, I was about ten years old, and then we moved into town. Um, I'm a, a avid Dale College person. I went to Dale from survey to matric, and I managed to get my son to go there from survey to matric as well. And I'm a staunch, staunch old alien. Um, I watch all the rugby matches, so I love my school. Yeah. Uh, was I naughty at school? Yeah, definitely. I'm <laughs> I, th not I think surprised. the fact that I can ride on a bicycle, uh, ride on a bicycle without shocks for as long as I can, bears testament to the fact that my backside did. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, uh, yeah it, it's, it's a lovely town. I, I love my town. I, I actually love King Moonstown, and it's, it, it's, it's a funny little town, but you know it's changed a lot over the years. Um, but but the heart of King Williamstown has changed. It really has. The demographics have changed a lot, but the heart has stayed the same. And I think this is why I love my town so much. It's right, got soul. And, and, and a lot of people that I meet, Mike, who come from King Williamstown, no matter where they are around the world, they always still refer to them as as from themselves as from King Williamstown. You know, they and they're passionate about their city. Yeah. King King Arts are incredible, you know. I, I, what I found as well when I started doing my fundraising stuff as well was uh, the amount of King Arts that have supported me and are continue supporting me from, yeah. from far. I got yeah. a friend, John Battaglia, was in school with me. He's in the States and he never stops supporting me. Every, every time I put something out, John's there, you know. Um, I've got John Mackay in, in, in the UK, who I, I, I converse with a lot. Um, 
my friend Lou in Italy. There's so many people that, that are from King and they've all, they all they've ended up all over the country. And we've actually linked up again, which is really nice. It's a nice thing about the social media these days. Uh, yeah. and it took me a long time to get onto Facebook, I must be honest. Uh, when it first came out, I was like, what is this rubbish? Uh, but once I got going, I actually realized you know, you know, how much you can actually link up with the old friends. Right. That's when I really got in. And that, that, I think, has been the best thing for me. And you built an about, audience uh, as well. And, and, and one of the discussions you and I have, have been chatting about is you, you inadvertently, again, almost by accident, built a brand, the Pink Fairy. We'll get into that in a second. Mm. So you say that you, you started running uh, to because you wanted to be fit and healthy when, you, when your boy arrived. Um, and then you did a couple of runs and you thought, man, actually, I can, I can do this. And you are one of the most natural, naturally talented runners that I've ever been around. And, and, and as you say, like a, like a couple of months later, you did your first marathon. Um, you were the only Oak I know that can run comrades and film yourself and put stuff on social media at the same time, which is not a lot of people can do that. <laughs> uh, yeah. Nat naturally fit. I don't know so much about the naturally fit and natural runner um, thing. Um, you know, it's like Gary player once said you know, the more you practice, the, the, the luckier, luckier you get. get yeah. And I think it's very much the more you train, the more you look like you actually are quite natural. Uh, I actually do train quite hard, and I always have. Um, but I must be honest, yes, I've got the, I've got it in the genes for running. My dad, he ran quite a lot, um, and it definitely is in the genes. Uh, I, I was quite good at cross-country at school, very much yeah. without doing any training as well. Yeah. So it's definitely in the genes. So it, it came through for me, and I, I, something I really love doing as well. It's maybe about, it's very much a passion. You spoke about passion. It's very much a passion for me. Maybe it's something about the Eastern Cape border as well, because if you look at you say your dad ran as well. If I look at Mark Morell, who's uh, one of the pastors who of a church in Ganubi, his dad was a runner as well. And then you look at Desmond Becker, who's run Washi so many mm -hmm. times. His dad was also a big runner. So it seems to be hereditary. Well, little, yeah. Yeah, it seems to be hereditary if you're from the Eastern Cape. And I think Des Becker is definitely someone that we need to have on the channel. Um, okay, so running the Comrades, your first one, you you took it on as a personal challenge, right? You didn't have any charity or anything involved. You were like, I'm just going to go. No. no, no, that was way back in 19, was it 99, I think it was. It was my first one. And yes, very much as a, as a, as a personal challenge. Uh, and it was very much, a, I'm doing this once, like everybody says, I'm doing one this once, I'm never going to do it again. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, one and done. And, and we didn't have the Bull Rowan medal at that stage, in fact. And uh, I actually did a 901, which absolutely wow. blew my mind. Because I wasn't right. expecting, I was going for a finish. You know, 11 hours, yeah. those days it was 11 hours. Finish, 11 hours, so. yeah. But I've, I've actually still got a video somewhere of my feet. I actually recorded what my feet looked like afterwards because they were so swollen. And so horrendous. I actually took a video of it and said, this is why you're never doing this race again. <laughs> and we made a, a, a total error of finishing the race and driving all the way back to Bethlehem. Oy. I sat in the car three hours back to Bethlehem. Oy. I got out the other side. I actually seized solid. I right. actually had to be helped inside by my sister-in-law. Right. It was quite hectic. Yeah. And, um, but, you know, you know, it's like comrades. Like, yeah, three, days, three days later, you're driving back home and you're like, you know, on the uprun, the uprun's different. So you're still talking for the wife and the wife, but you said two days ago you have never doing this again. So, of course, it, it was natural. Have done and down, got to do an up. So the next year we did it up. All right. And the next year was actually this year they brought in the Bull Rowan. Uh, and I squeaked the Bull Rowan by two minutes. Wow. Um, I was actually really super fit, but I just had a horrendous run. Um, so I squeaked it by, by two minutes, like at 8.58, I think it was. And then I just... Then I started enjoying it. I said, you know, this is an amazing event. And I just started doing more and more of them. And uh, I, I carried on with uh, not just doing road running as well. Uh, I do a lot of a lot of uh, mountain uh, mountain running, trail running. Yeah, yeah. I've always done it. It's something I'm really passionate about as well. I do a lot of adventure racing. So I sort of built, built it all in and always sort of worked. My second half of the year was mountain biking, trail running adventure racing and the first half was comrades focus 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 and it, that hasn't changed i must be totally honest uh, that so that's still changed. that's comrades still the way you that's still the way you manage the two the two still the way i manage things yeah i've put a lot of other events in with the iron man and things like that right but right it's still very much the way i manage it and the way i enjoy doing it yeah right. i've just carried on doing it right um, okay down. so how many comrades have you done mike that's 22 now i did my 22nd 22. now yeah. Yeah, that's all in a row. I haven't missed one. Obviously, we don't count the uh, COVID and that. No, uh, no, no, it doesn't count. Uh, so it's 22 in a row. I want to try and do the 30 in a row. That's my aim. That's what I'm going to go for. Wow. And wow. then we'll see after that. And at, and at we'll what point did, what did, did it transition from a personal challenge to, hang on, I want to use this platform that I've got to raise some money for, for a local charity. And why did you choose the SBCA? 
Um, yeah, funny story. You know, when I was even early on in my comrades' running days, I, I looked up to people like Percy Dunn who ran as a licorice all sorts man. Yes. Um, and we had we used to have the Songololo at, at Two Oceans and at Comrades. Yes. Um, which Bruce, Bruce Ford got involved in. And I looked up to those guys. You know, this is this is a hell of a race as it is the best of times. And you're now dressing up in 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 a in a uh, an outfit like this. And um, so I, I sort of looked at these guys. I mean, now that's really quite something. And and I always looked at it one day I'd like to do it for a charity. And I just yeah. didn't decide yeah. at such an easy state. And then I did the, I think it was my 13th comrades. And I just got to a point where I was I was enjoying the race still, but I just needed a little bit extra oomph to it. Yes. So I bought a, a pair of wings at the pink drive stand um, for supporting cancer. Yeah. Put a pair of wings on and ran. And it was a down run. And I remember starting off and everybody's just chirping me, chirping me, chirping me. And then people were calling me you know, fairy and butterfly and you know, anything and everything on the planet. And so one of the guys said to me, well, what are you doing it for? So I, I said to him, look, I haven't really got a charity as such, but uh, I'll do it for the old age home uh, because my mother-in-law was with the old age home at that stage. Yeah. And I, I'll go a uh, rand for every time I get called a fairy. So ran along, finished the race. Guy came to me at the end of the race. He says, what number did you finish? I said, look, but I, I can barely remember my name, never mind what number I was on. So I got to halfway, I was about 200, and I, I, I gave up. And um, he turned around to his wife and said, well, give me some money. He gave me 100 rand. Complete stranger. Yeah. So this just sort of blew my mind. Well, this is incredible. So I gave, I think, about four or 500 rand to the old age home that day. Wow. And um, yeah, and then the next year, they unfortunately closed down. But, you know, always closest to my heart has been the SPCA. It's been animals. We are massive animal lovers. We've got way too many of them. And uh, so the next year I approached Annette and I said, look, uh, I'd like to do fundraising for you guys and I'm going to do comrades again and I'll try and do it as a rand per kilometer right. fundraising drive. Right. And that's when I got into the Facebook thing big time. And I started um, just putting, I just put it out there. So guys, I'm doing comrades. This is what I'm going to do. Rand a kilometer. Let's see what happens. And right. bang, we, we raced the child. Wow. Know? And I, I just, Absolutely wow. blew my mind that I could raise so, 30, so from six hundred bucks from six hundred bucks, from 600 bucks to thirty thousand. Wow! Exactly, wow. It, it, it absolutely just blew me away. And I looked at this and well, this is really something quite incredible. And I was enjoying myself. And I ran. I still ran in my club colours. I ran with the, with the wings on. I had a little tutu made. Um, I think that year was an up run. And somewhere along the route, there was somebody that had a pair of bunny ears, and I begged it off him. Literally begged it <laughs> off the spectator. <laughs> And the guy gave them to me. They got added to the costume. They got sewn onto a cap for next year. And then a cape came onto it. And yeah. it just developed over yeah. one year. And eventually I went, you know what? That's it. Let's go balls to the wall. Let's go pink. Right. So everything went pink. And yes. uh, it's just developed every year. And, and it's, been, it's been amazing. It's, it's, it's been a real journey of, of discovery for myself. Um, what I can do uh, for others. It's been a journey um, that I've thoroughly enjoyed. And it's become an absolute passion. And what, what I've found has been really incredible is, is how the community bought into it. Because yes. every year that I've done the fundraising, I've tried to make it slightly different. Yes. And, and I would I think the one year we did puzzle pieces, big puzzle pieces like this. Which I remember that, yeah. Us. I remember that. It was a big puzzle we did. Um, I've done T-shirts. I've done buffs. So I try and change it around every year. But one of the constants that has always remained has been the, the rand per kilometer, so to speak. And then the other one, which developed over the years, which has become even better for me, which has really become incredible, is the school visits. Yes. Uh, it developed into me going into the, mainly the junior schools, which when I first started doing it was terrifying for me. I wasn't a public speaker at all. <laughs> it was really scary. But it developed into going into them. And then I sort of found that, you know what, this, this is really quite something. I'm actually now passing over a message as well, not just about yeah. fundraising. Yes. It's now becoming about passing a message over and i've had the most incredible interactions not a not massive amounts of them but i've had some of those which you go oh yes yeah. why i'm doing yeah this. i had yeah. one at dell jr this year i mean you really get teary eyed <laughs> um there was a boy at dell jr this year uh he was the only grade seven dressed up in a fairy outfit he had a great big picking green <sighs> wig on wow and the end of my chat and everything, I saw I saw this guy sitting with all the grade sevens were on the top section, and I called him down and said, "You come here," and he came down and I said, "Look, you know, I gave him a buff and I said, I want." He said, "Can we have a photograph?" I said, "Well, of course we're going to have a selfie." So we went out to the little courtyard there, and then he turns to me and he says, "Tom, I need to tell you something." Okay, what do you mean? He turns to me, he says, 
So you are my inspiration. Oh. Well, that was for me. I'm done. Oh. You know, things oh. like that. Yeah. So things like that are, are what just are so incredible. They inspire yes. me to continue doing it. Yes. And yeah, I'm 53 now. And I turned to my wife last year and I said, oh, how much longer can I carry on being a pink fairy? Gray hair is getting grayer. Beard's getting grayer. How much longer can I carry on being a pink fairy before it gets, you know, starts getting silly? And being my solid rock, she turns to me and she says, uh, how old is Santa Claus? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, but that's a good point. <laughs> yeah, for so, sure. Yeah, so, for sure. Santa Claus. Uh, I tell you what, if <laughs> if you haven't followed Mike yet, uh, I, I'm going to put I'm going to put your your uh, your social media um, uh, addresses in in the link to this video when we put it up on YouTube. But if you haven't, please make sure you, you follow Mike because yeah, and go specifically and watch the videos of Mike at the schools because it really is so great. The interaction with the kids. Firstly, they find a grown man dressed as a fairy, hilarious, and that breaks that ice. And then and then you bring the message. Of, of, of what you're doing and how you're trying to make a difference for Annette and for the SPCA and, and helping them. And, and all of a sudden that selfishness that, that most of us are, 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 are we develop in our, in our youth, it, it kind of changes and they're going, Oh wait, I could do something for somebody else. And I can do something for, for, for another living creature that can't speak for themselves. And it's a beautiful message. So please, uh, once you're done watching this video, click on those links and please go and follow Mike and uh, and uh, also watch very carefully because he does a lot of other events as well. Um, what's the biggest amount of money that you've uh, that you've raised uh, running comrades, Mike? Uh, I think in one year we did a ninety thousand. Wow. Um, but it was it was actually it was, it was more like uh, it was more like forty thousand. But then there was a fifty thousand which came in from from ex King Art or Roland Roy. Hello. Um, yeah, you know, really, um, incredible yeah. golfer. Um, yeah. he was at that stage working for Southern Sons and they had a golf day, so, and he was looking for a charity to send it to. So, he saw what I was doing, he went bang, thank you very much. There's 50 grand for you guys. Beautiful. So, Beautiful. that was that was the biggest. Um, but we actually worked it out the other day, and I was actually astounded that even this year alone, we close, we're actually on, sitting on over a hundred thousand for this year, uh, already for charities. Fantastic. Fantastic. Uh, it's not counting dog food, cat food, and all that that we raise up, uh, as a bit with our events and that. And over the last, I think it's about eight years, we're over a million rand. Wow. Which has gone to animal welfare. Um, wow. Yeah. I've never done the nonprofit organization thing. I, I honestly don't have the time for the, um, the admin. It's right. It's just, I've got right. to do it. It's not, it's not, it's not well, something because, I'm very good at. And, because you're a working person. I mean, I mean, this is not your full-time yeah. job. I mean, you work, you work uh, for the Toyota group, if I'm not mistaken. And, exactly. Uh, yes, and so. they... Uh, and how have they supported you? Do they give you time off to train? Do they give you time off to go and do all the crazy things that you do? Yeah, no, look, look my, my, my work has been brilliant at Buffalo Toyota in King of Williamstown. They, they have always supported me uh, in, 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 in very much in, in the amount of time that I'm given off, uh, especially when I'm doing school visits, uh, you know, going out during the day, because it's always in the morning and things like that. It takes an hour or two hours out, out of my day and things like yeah. that. And then I'm, even in 2018, I actually did, because it was my 20th comrades, I did a tour around the whole border region where I ran about 700 Ks over two weeks. And I visited schools all over the place and yeah. they supplied the vehicle, they supplied the fuel, the time oh. off was actually given to me. Oh. And so yeah, they've, they've actually been quite, a, quite astounding as well. And, and you know, I, I get teased mercilessly sometimes that this is our pink fairy. I don't mind. I even had my hair dyed pink when I went to a Toyota conference the one year. So <laughs> you, you and I had a discussion about this in my studio in the Algo FM studios in East London, where I said to you, yeah. "Dude, embrace the pink fairy thing because it's a brand and you can use it." Yeah. And I'm so proud of you because you actually have done that now. Uh, so, so, so. I mean, the major thrust of your fundraising is the comrades' effort. And I mean, 22 years later, almost a million rand is, is amazing. Uh, but you also do a lot of your own events as well, which then again redirects some of the money back towards King uh, SBCA as well. Tell us a little bit about that. Yes, Gordon. No, and and I must just say thank you to you as well, because you actually, you were talking about an inspiration to me. What You were an inspiration to myself, to me as well. Um, oh, way too kind. What you've done on social media platforms and things like that, where you've gone with super sport and all the things you've been doing is quite inspirational as well. Thank you. And you, what you said to me was embrace the pink fairy. And and you actually were one of the driving forces behind myself actually taking it on. So thanks to you as well. Brilliant. Um, Happy to be part of it. <laughs> Small, tiny part of it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the other events. Uh, so what happened in, in around about 2018, 2017, 2018, 
uh, my wife and I decided to do Pink Ferry Multi Sports because I love adventure racing. I really, I'm not a great adventure racer. I'm not the fastest one on the planet, that's for sure. Um, but I really love my adventure racing. So we started putting together little 25 kilometer adventure races to start people into adventure racing. Right, we keep them right. simple, we keep them fun. The most important thing for us is to keep them fun. And yeah. what we've done with those, and we've done a couple of mountain bike events as well now, and what we've done with those is each time we do an event, we target a specific animal welfare, welfare organization. So if we do an event in Stutteram region, we do the Stutteram SPCA. If we do yes. one in East London, they, we then do, there's a lady by the name of the Furry Godmother in East London, absolutely incredible woman. We give her the money. Um, we've given to Hilltop Animal Outreach, to Ben Safa Dance in Indom Dansani. Uh, so it's all over the place. And I've met the most incredible people through this as well. There are so many people out there doing incredible work. And what I've always said is, you know, I, being a working man, I can't be out there on the streets helping animals. Yeah. So yeah. my way of looking at this, if I can't do it, those people are doing it. They're putting their time and their effort into it. Yes. And a lot of them are doing it in their own pockets yes. and really are batting themselves. So let me help them a little bit where I can. So we shove the money their way. So each event is not about what we're going to make out. We actually, we basically cover our costs most of the time. So literally all we're trying to do is say, right, guys, we've targeted 10 grand for that person. Bang, right. there we go. Right. And they've worked right. beautifully. And we've got right. a lovely following of people that, that do all our events. And it's just all about fun. It's not about who comes first or second. Yes, they compete. Yes, we have lovely prizes, but it's about fun. And that's all it has been. And we, we've continued doing it and we're loving it. Huh? It's, it's a journey and it's just never going to stop. We've got another one coming up now uh, at Arena River, Riverside Resorts on the 5th of November. Cool place. Which is going to be many years. That's going to be entertaining. Five, five, 10 and 15K trail run. Running around obstacle courses, going to be good. Uh, Love it. Good. And, and what a venue as well. It's just a really cool oh. place. I mean, Arena is, is in the, uh, the heart of paradise on the way out to Tunza or Sinsa, yeah. if you want to be English. Well, uh, it really is a cool place to be. Uh, Mike, well, you know, it, as, as you're chatting and as you're speaking, it just it, it, I've been in, in Durban for almost seven years now, but I man, I miss some of the Eastern Cape because there are so many great yeah. people doing so many great things. You know, you talk about mountain biking, you talk about Rob Hartzenberg and, and the work that he does mm -hmm. out there as well. Um, so I, I, the list of people that I'm going to talk to you from, from the Eastern Cape is to, because I'm talking to you, you're talking to them and I'm going, geez, we need to talk to that person <laughs> exactly. as well. So thanks. Yeah. Thanks very much for, for connecting the dots. Um, uh, and yeah. again, if you haven't followed Mike, on socials you are missing out because not only are you going to get uh, the opportunity to contribute to something that is so important and and annette and the team at uh, king spca are amazing in fact they're so amazing that my cat uh, it comes from king williamstown spca so my little cat that lives in durban is is a king uh, spca cat uh, and, and they do such great work but you're also you, you're going to find out about that you, but you're also going to get to follow some of the crazy stuff that michael webb does and, and he does some weird stuff he does it so well though that every time there's a comrades race the cameramen are looking out for you because i don't think there's been a year when i've watched comrades that i haven't seen you on tv <laughs> dude you get more tv time <laughs> than most celebrities get it's ridiculous and then of course all the other events as well mike you know if there was a first interview for the youtube channel i'm so glad it was you because you really are doing such amazing things and and i don't care what your age is or how gray your hair is you just keep going because because the animals need it but uh, but people need it as well you know you're connecting people uh, who who as you say you don't have the time to go and do it a lot of them don't have either so they're going well i need to contribute somehow and you're that that connection between them needing to help and the people yeah. that and the animals that need the help so so well done my buddy well done um uh, closing well, thoughts you, uh, you know you haven't just done comrades you've done iron man races you've done 70.3s you've done so many so many different things uh, just a closing thought from you if you want to leave people with a message and and, and how they can get involved just uh, go for it this is the the stage is yours Okay, yeah, thanks, Gordon. Yeah, um, you know, the people people seem to think that um, getting involved, it, 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 as you said, means going out and doing it themselves. Very much, you don't have to be going out there to do it yourself. If you can find somebody that is doing a, a good cause and you yeah. can support that person, doesn't matter in which way you can do it, by all means, please go out and do that. If it yeah. means coming through myself, my pink fairy out, uh, you know, what do you want to call them, um, shenanigans, then by all means do it that way. But there are so many amazing people out there doing so much amazing stuff. And for me, animal welfare is always going to be the tops. Uh, right. 
Right. So if you want to do anything for animals, guys, please follow my channels. Go in the go in the links. Do what you need to do in order to do help us to raise money for the animal welfare. Yes. Um, there are so many incredible animal welfare. So if you ever need, ooh, you're hell of a story. <laughs> if you ever need to, um, yeah, you get hold of me for any reason. Just go into links, and I will I'll get hold of you. It's it's, it's been an incredible journey. We've, we've had. Uh, we've been really, really blessed. Uh, even in fact, this year we even got um, thirty thousand rand from a, a Durban agency uh, from UPL. Uh, Yay! Well done, uh, Durbs. She, she saw one of my videos at one of the schools, and she just loved it so much. She shared it to the board of directors. They right. gave us thirty grand. I did a talk up here just before comrades. Beautiful. So it's spreading. It's going Beautiful. nationwide, and this is what I've always wanted to happen. Yeah. So spread the word, spread the love. Um, that's all I can really say. Just. Spread follow love, Mike. Guys. Follow Mike on social networks. Follow his shenanigans as he as he calls them because they really are. I mean, Mike will post a picture on a Friday afternoon of himself on a mountain bike in the middle of freaking nowhere. <laughs> so just well, I, follow I, Mike. What one thing I've I, I have figured out with, with my followers is they really enjoy seeing me in pain. <laughs> <laughs> and dressed so the as a fairy. Myself, because uh, one thing I've always have found with, with, with every event I've done is. The harder it gets, the more I start enjoying myself, the bigger my smile gets. So right, maybe right. that's why people enjoy For watching sure. me in pain. For sure. and, you know, in the comrades this year, I am not lying, and it's happened every single year. One of the biggest the, the sections of pain on my body is actually my jaw muscles. From smiling. Because I actually just don't smile, stop smiling for oh, 90 days. That's beautiful. It's, it's that's crazy. beautiful. And I actually, like, next day, I'm actually quite sore. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> I, I, love love, I love it. Oh, that is such a that is such a microwave thing, hey? That is such a microwave thing. Listen, you're an absolute inspiration. Thank you so much for being part of the show. And uh, we will, as we said, we'll put the links to Mike's social networks in the, in the description of the video as well. Uh, please go and give him a follow. And next time he does something crazy, just give him, even if you give him 10 bucks, whatever just like five rand ten rand whatever it is just throw some money mike's way i can guarantee you it's going to go to people that really need it and to animals that really need the help as well mike webb all the way in king williamstown good luck with the storm and uh, thank you for taking the Thanks, time Jordy.